All right, what's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode three of the other channel, a Games and Grabs podcast brought to you by Powered 4 TV. My name is Sonny G, and I'm joined, as always, with Steve. Hello. Steve, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm uh, not, not too bad at all. Not too bad. Good. Are you ready to talk about a truly terrible episode of uh, Monday Night Raw? Well, I mean, I can't wait. It's an absolute classic. Cliche yeah, this was an episode of Raw. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, oh this was goodness. this was a real doozy. You know? um, yeah, we've watched some yeah. terrible wrestling in our time, but this uh, was nonsensical. It was, I, I don't know. I just, I, it was just bad. You know, it was just really, really bad. It was all over the place, wasn't it? You know, it was. Yeah. And, and it was a mess. This was the go home show for for the '96 Royal Rumble, <laughs> yeah, as well. And we saw one of the guys that was is going to be fighting for the title at the Royal Rumble. Yep. And the whole show was was focused around. Gold Dust and, and Razor Ramon. You would think that they were the main event for Royal Rumble based on yeah, this definitely. Episode. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because oh, that, that was the primary focus. You'd think Doc Hendricks was in the uh in the match as well. Like it was gonna be a triple a special threat. guest special guest referee. <laughs> yeah, special yeah, special guest referee Doc Hendricks. He deserved that spot oh, okay. in fairness, but just just for the way that he, he was just made to stand around all night. God, it was it, yeah. It, it was a it, it it was a painful episode. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's get let, yeah. let's get into it. Let's do it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. <laughs> Firstly, before we do, I just want to thank everybody who um, has been checking out the uh, the other channel podcast. This podcast um, over the last sort of couple of weeks, it's been a blast to record. Um, with the exception of this week, because that episode of Raw sucked. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, uh, we appreciate you checking out the podcasts and the videos and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Keep keep uh, keep coming back for more. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Right. This week, there was a lot of this. There was a lot of Sonny doing... And by Sonny, I don't mean me. I mean Sonny as in Tammy Lynn Sitch. Um just doing sexual stuff, which is Ooh. not in fitting with the show at all. No, no. A, a, a tad ahead of its sort of place in WWF, I would say. A, a, yeah, a I would couple say of years so, ahead. Yeah, definitely two years yeah. too early for this. Yeah, yeah, a bit, a bit ahead. Yeah, but, it was um, all stuff basically like her saying that she likes it raw and we all like it raw. Um, and this week I didn't like raw. I thought <laughs> it was just so fucking bad. We no, keep saying it was bad. No, Let's explain why bad. it was bad. And it was so bad. Was now, bad. the first match on paper, a classic. Give it 20 minutes or give it 20 minutes or more. Oh, and we're we're yeah. we're we're gonna get a wrestling clinic. Should be, yeah. So it was the Should. current King of the Ring, Owen Hart, against former tag team champion and current questionable human being Marty Gennetti. <laughs> um, oh God, he's he's up. I mean, him and Sonny Tammy Sitch, they are. Um, they're on the questionable human being list these days. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They Just are. Somewhere near definitely. the top as well. Right near the top. I mean, oh man, Marty Gennetti is... The guy's out mm. there. He's out there. <laughs> I mean, I think I think on Facebook once he basically admitted to murder. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, that, that, was, that was an interesting time. And... Did he also um, want to marry or have sex with his daughter or something like that? I was just thinking about this. Uh, wasn't it that he found he found out that the person, the, the girl that he thought was his 
daughter or stepdaughter wasn't his daughter or stepdaughter or something. Um, and then, and and then, despite the fact that he practically raised this girl, then said, "Oh, so I suppose it's okay to say now she's pretty hot." It's like, yeah, you're a it's, pervert. <laughs> yeah, it's look just 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 relive the the glory days of the rockers. Go on podcasts, tell the stories of the road, and just don't be weird. Yeah, yeah? just 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 oh yeah, man. Anyway. Marty Jannetty versus Owen Hart on paper is a great match. And this was just an okay match. It wasn't barely given any time at all. Um, And we'll cut to the chase of it. Owen Hart won with a very nice looking bridge pinning combination. And that was very good. And that, then that's the crux of it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, Owen Hart did an enziguri in the match, which was great. Always executed that very Mm -hmm. nicely. Uh, yeah. Marty Jannetty did a couple of drop kicks uh, and a Japanese arm drag, which I always appreciate. Yes. Um, mm. But otherwise, yeah. it was just a, a nothing match, um, which is a shame because even though it is a nothing match and just means absolutely nothing, I would have liked to have seen it given more time, especially more time, you know, that was given to other shit aspects of this episode of Raw. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, the the first episode that we watched was was bad but hilarious. So funny, mm. the whole raw bowl thing. Second episode was was an improvement. This was just like a, a tough watch, and then and then and now, admittedly, it's like I'm not gonna go and talk about this on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, it it does make it very very difficult. But this is the grave that we've dug for ourselves, isn't it? We have, we have, yeah, and and I think we just need to, we, we need to have fun with it and take the mick out of it. That, the, and that's, the worst that's of it is, this is pre-recorded. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. So this has yeah, gone yeah. through post. This has gone through production. And, and there are put this show together. Errors. There are. It's unreal. Which will come it on really to is later, unreal. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Next up, we've got Captain 90s Todd Pettengill. Um, he's here to talk about the Royal Rumble. He leads us into um, Diesel, saying how he's going to win the Royal Rumble. And, you know, he... Sweaty yeah, Diesel. Shawn Michaels is in it. Sweaty Diesel as well, yeah. Mm. Uh, they, they must have filmed him at a house show, is all I yeah. can think. Because... Yeah. Yeah. It, it, either way, he's sweating. And he's talking about mm. how Shawn Michaels is going to be in the Rumble... Um, and how Vader's going to be in the Royal Rumble, but he doesn't care because he's going to win it. And that's the correct attitude to have. You've got to have that confidence in yourself. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Yeah. So my hat's off. So my hat's off to to Diesel. Have a have a picture of Diesel. There he is. Cool. Um, and once again, they showed what I can only describe as the greatest vignette for a Royal Rumble entrant and debuting WWE slash WWF superstar of all time. Of course, we're talking about Vader. Now, yeah, there's a, there's a lot to take away from the Vader vignette. And I just want to point out, for those watching the video podcast, obviously we put p- pictures up um, that we've captured during us watching Raw. What we see here is uh, Vader's mask, you know, fading into the foreground mm. of a, yeah. a flexing, posing Vader. Now, this is 90s production at its very peak. Mm. Chef's Kiss 90s production on the Vader vignette. Now, we've is talked it, about it, it the last Ke- couple of weeks. Yeah, is it Kevin Dunn at this point, production? I don't know. I don't think... I, I, if I, I don't know. Hmm. I mean, WWE I always know, put together know. very good video packages, but this one, despite its glory, you know, its fantastic, you know, and glorious nature, is bad. The one that they show later mm. on in the show for someone else is oh. also equally as bad, if not worse. And we'll get to that. Imagine the worst vignette you have seen on modern WWE. Yeah, and then times that by a thousand. 
Mm. That is what the upcoming vignette that we're going to talk about. That's what how bad that is. It's bad. Yeah, it's really, really bad. It's like they've gone. Terrible. You know what? We know this episode of Raw is terrible. So <laughs> let's throw together a terrible vignette for a returning superstar that we need to make look like an absolute cert to win the Raw Rumble. Yeah. Yes. Pretty yeah. Much. Oh, God damn it. Um, this kept happening a lot during the night. There's Doc Hendricks uh, stood backstage waiting for Razor Ramon to potentially, keyword, show up to, you know, confront Gold Dust. Yeah. This was the focal point of the show. Oh, shit. All night. Yeah. yeah. During matches you know, every opportunity they got to cut backstage to Doc Hendricks, they did. Now, you imagine like modern Raw, last night's Raw or, or whatever, you know, that that, yeah. that is aired. And you, you have a theme throughout and you, and you tend to see the same person. Let's just say it's focused around Brock Lesnar. You might see him every hour yeah. so that it keeps it, you know, for the three hours. This was like that, but every 10 minutes. Yeah. Because the show's yeah. only 45 minutes without adverts. Yeah. Every 10 minutes we were seeing bloody Doc McStuffin or whatever his flipping name is. Yeah. <laughs> Doc Hendricks, you know, formerly known as Michael yeah. P.S. Hayes, and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it it, um, it was just baffling why, why that was, was the focal baffling. point for the whole show. Yeah, it was it. really, really weird. And like we said earlier on, you know, you would think that was the main event of yeah, the Royal Rumble. Would. Not the Royal Rumble mm. itself, not the WWF Championship match, but the Intercontinental Championship match between yeah. Gold Dust and Razor Ramon. Um, it was it's just incredibly bizarre. So basically, mm. every single update, when it goes to Doc Hendricks, he's like, uh, I'm getting word from my sources that Razor Ramon is <laughs> definitely on his way to the building. And, you know, will he be here in time for the Gold Dust, you know, interview that we're going to be having later on tonight? Of course he is. Of course he is. Otherwise, why are we wasting our time with this? Exactly. Oh, man. Imagine watching this bullshit weekly. Like, oh, at the God. time. You know, I don't understand how they can how anybody could have stuck with it because it is, it really is that bad. Like last week's one that we watched, that was all right. That's some good wrestling on it. This week, yeah. was bloody ridiculous. Oh, uh, I, yeah, I just, I just, just, just even as a, even if the fact that there wasn't a lot of wrestling that, that happened on this episode, just mm. as an episode, as a TV show itself, yeah. it was crap. Yeah, it was really poorly put together. Yeah, it was really bad. poorly put together. You know, all it would have taken um, is for Vince at the beginning of the show uh, when they when they announce all the stuff that's going on on the show, just be like, "Oh well, we, we've heard that Razor Ramon um, is on his way to the arena um, as, as we speak, um, and he's looking to confront Gold Dust." There we go. That's it. That is all you need, and then he can come out during the the gold dust thing later on, and we're all good. You do not need Doc Hendricks, you know, all the way from Bad Street, USA, to stand <laughs> backstage and wait for Razor Ramon to mm. to, to come along. Who's, because let's be, it's probably fucking freezing there too. Who who's precisely four miles? Away, he's four miles away. Four, four precisely. miles away. Four. Four, yep, four miles, miles away. away. Yeah, four exact miles. Um, you know, and it's, it's you know, time's against him because the show is only 45 minutes long without adverts, and he's got to get himself there. Yeah, and it's been snowing as well, which we, we see later. It has been snowing, and you know, mm. Doc Hayes is probably freezing because that looks <laughs> like a cold <laughs> corridor. <laughs> he does, he didn't look like there was any radiators there, did it? No, no I mean, look I mean you look, yeah, look no at the rads. picture here. No rads. Just <laughs> no rads at all, no carpet, no, single glazed, you know, just single, si yeah, single glazed windows. 
<laughs> single glazed windows. He stood right near the door as well. Bloody and, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I'd have put one. Yeah. I'd have put more clothes on. You can guarantee in the morning those windows had ice on the inside. Oh, the definitely, way. yeah. Their windows yeah. are blown. <laughs> They've got condensation. All, all that shit. They've got it all going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they're they're done for. Anyway, is uh, Sonny blowing on a pool cue? Wonder what that's insinuating. <laughs> Maybe that this episode blows. Yeah, yeah. And here she is playing pool. Uh, she likes it raw. I'm not sure what she's got a top and done there, but um, you know, maybe it's to maybe it's to aim the cue better. Mm, yeah, yeah. There's a good rest going on there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, there's a good. I, I, a good I mean, a good. You know, go on. Top top undone aside, she she looks. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> oh, she's she she's stunning. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's yeah. a good B rest that she's got there. <laughs> but a good B. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great B rest. Yeah, we're getting cancelled. Um, because we're pigs, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, but she's a questionable human being as well. So that's all... true. She's up there. Uh, she's oh, her oh, and my oh, top of the list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. We can oh, say what we want because she's a questionable individual in real life. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, if you want to learn more about um, <laughs> Sunny, aka Tammy Sitch, uh, if you just head to pornhub.com um, and search the, just search Sunny WWE, I'm sure, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll find videos of her. Fortunately, the video isn't from 1996. No. So I hear. So I hear. I, I... I mean, I don't, I, I don't know for sure. Uh, it's, I, I can yeah. only go off what I've been told, which is, you know, second, maybe even third-hand information. Um, mm. But, you know, that, that's, what, that's what I've been told. Friend of a friend of a friend. Yeah. 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 Um, moving on. Moving on. The ringmaster was back this week. Good to see him. You know, again, Good we don't him. know. We don't know what kind of career the ringmaster's got. Um, mm. You know, but it's good to see him back. Second week in a row. Last week he was unveiled as the million dollar champion. This this week they're bigging him up like he could win the Royal Rumble. I don't see that yeah. this year, nor do I see it in his future. But you know, I could be wrong. Mm. Yeah, here he is. He's squaring up against another young upstart um, called Matt Hardy. Yeah, interesting, yeah. interesting character. I, I'm not sure about the ring gear here of of um, young Matt Hardy here. No, I'm not sure either. The I mean, he, it's very generic. Mm, yeah, mm. sky blue tights. You know, um, the white wrestling boots. Yeah, black black yeah. armbands. Oh, sorry, black elbow pads, and then like the the arm coverings are sky blue and white as well. Yeah, yeah, interesting. I mean, I think if this kid's going to make it anywhere, which, you know, let's be fair, the jobbers that you see on Raw these days, and even then, you don't really, you know, they don't really amount to anything. I expect the no. same for Matt Hardy. Um, yeah, a change of look, nothing, potentially. Yeah, there's but, nothing yeah. really unique about him, at, at, you know, here. He's, he's very standard, I'm definitely going to lose this match kind of uh, looking guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, he, he he might need to. I don't know. I think if he if he grows his hair out, maybe. Okay. You know. Okay. Kind of like a. I'm thinking sort of like black clothes. You know, have a pink, a bit of a a gothicy punk sort of vibe to him. I don't know. Okay. Just, just something different. Just something. Different. Sure. Because yeah. That looks that 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 looked very sort of late eighties, early nineties. That look, and and you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. I just I can't see him. Fast heading towards the millennium, aren't we, at this stage? Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, hey, who knows? If he got himself a tag partner, who knows? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's whether the WWF would be willing to sort of take a chance on on on, on this young upstart, Matt Hardy. Oh, we mm. don't know. We'll, 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 we'll keep an eye on his progress, just like keep we're keeping our eye on the ringmaster as well. Uh, yes. I'm, I, I have, you know, I'd like to see them both more, but 
it's debatable whether we actually will, but we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Yeah. Um, the Million Dollar Champion, of course, the Ringmaster, won this match by the Million Dollar Dream. Of course, the, the Cobra Clutch used by mm. the Million Dollar Man himself. Mm -hmm. Good move, the Cobra Clutch. You don't really see it anymore. No. I was always a big fan of it. It's a good move, though. Yeah, it's, I, yeah. I, I like it. It's a good move. I like a submission finish. It's like, I like the Cobra Clutch. I like, you know, like a full Nelson, like when uh, B. Lash was using the uh, using the full Nelson. Remember when they called it the yep. full Lashley? Get out of here. What are you doing? That's classic bloody WWE, isn't it? It's so bad, though. But the full Lashley. What are you? What are you doing, WWE? Tell us, <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you calling it the full Lashley? Because it's fucking a stupid name. Then they changed it to the Hurt Lock, which is a much better name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That there was a uh, Vince was at it again in in, uh, in this match on comms. Uh, I noticed mm. uh, there was a part where uh, the ringmaster picked up um, uh, the jobber. What was it, Matt Hardy? Matt Hardy uh, picked Matt him Hardy, up. Yeah, Matt Hardy. Yeah, yeah, picked him up. I think meant to do some. There's a bit of. And, he dropped him onto the ropes, and Vince was like, oh, what a maneuver. That, that's what a maneuver. That's all. <laughs> yeah. What a maneuver. Not, not a reversal from Matt Hardy and blah, blah, blah. No, what a maneuver. What a maneuver. No, just, just, just what a maneuver. Hey, just, if just all else fails, what end. a maneuver. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I, I could what really learn a thing or two from Vincent Kennedy McMahon on commentary. Yeah. Just what a maneuver. If I don't know what it is, just what a maneuver. Uh, yeah, next time you do comms, please drop that in there. <laughs> I definitely will, 100%. What a manoeuvre. And I'll make sure that it's clipped out and we'll post it all over socials and everything. What a manoeuvre. Yeah. Uh, the manoeuvre in question this time was actually a stun gun where um, the ringmaster dropped... What's that guy's name? Uh, Hardy. Ha Hardy, okay. Uh, oh, dropped him onto the top rope. Yes, it was stun gun. Yeah, stun gun. There yeah. we go. Uh, the ringmaster wins, and he's still the million dollar champion because, of course, he is. Uh, nobody's taking that belt off him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And it was it was a it was a fine no. match. Lasted way longer than you expect it to last. Pointlessly. Uh, it did actually. Yeah, it did. To be fair, but a fine effort from young Matt Matt, yeah. Matt Hardy. Sure, you know he'll do well in the local, the local territories. The lo you know work the local indies. Um, I'm sure he'll make yeah, a few work, quid. Work the territories. Yeah, but he'll work yeah. the territories, and that's all good. Um, mm -hmm. Next up, quite possibly the worst, <clears throat> and I can't stress this enough: the worst vignette I have ever seen. Now look, I know that TV it's time is limited. <laughs> I know that TV time is limited here, right? But for fuck's sake, this Shawn Michaels vignette for him returning at the Royal Rumble is so bad. And it could, you know, fill the TV time with something else. Anything. It was way too long as well. It was way too long. We understood the point when he stood at the podium with the oversized WWF logo in that room with the other WWF logos because you've got to make last sure. Week. Yeah, you've got to make sure that. Yeah, we, exactly. We got the point last week. All you had to do was just show a picture of Shawn Michaels and be like, Shawn Michaels is going to be in the Royal Rumble. Blah, blah, blah. And that's it. You don't even need to show this vignette of Shawn Michaels explaining all the stuff that had gone on and he's got some clips with a beard and there are there are some clips where it's like it shows wrestling moves really quick and then cuts back out again, which was incredibly bizarre. Yeah, like like he was having like flashbacks. Yeah, it was I so... found that I, I found that weird as well. I was like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, why have they clipped it like this? It's, it's so and then, the, and then there was one clip that they slowed down and it had that sort of it's not quite black and white. It's got like a bit of a bluish tint on it. Um, yeah. That they love to do uh, back then. And 
at one point it's like it's showing him slow motion and he's holding his face like he's got bloody toothache or something. And then he fought and then he falls over in the ring. And then yeah, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> it's like it looks like something from Ghost. It it's so weird because it, it looks like it looks like an, an it looks like a, a late memorial. eight. It does. It looks like an it looks like a late eighties, early nineties, like cheesy sitcom. Not it's not even a sitcom, like a no, not a not a sitcom, that's the wrong word. Like um a soap, an American soap. Yeah, it it yeah, it looks like a shit daytime TV, like like Days of Our Lives or something. It yeah, looks like yeah, it yeah. Looks, <laughs> looks absolutely it look I was just watching it thinking, is he dead or something? I just don't yeah, I don't, I don't I know. it was bizarre. He's like, oh, it was very yeah, bizarre. No. All we needed to know well, God, God, is that God, he was coming back. The head and, uh, we know you're oh. coming back. You announced it last week at a presser. Yeah, which we said An unnecessary was good. presser. Yeah, we we enjoyed which... the presser as unnecessary yeah. as it was. But you've undone <laughs> yeah. all that good work by having this shit video package, and then for some reason, here he is channeling his inner William Regal with his curtains. <laughs> he's, kind of a, he's, he's kind of like the love child of William Regal and um, Charles Robinson there. Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah, William Robinson. I mean, that's. I mean, that they're great nineties curtains. They are. They are stellar nineties curtains. Yeah, I mean, look at this. I, look I've at been, what he's wearing as well. I mean, eleven-year-old me would have been well, ten actually. Ten-year-old me would have been so jealous of those curtains. Yeah. I mean, I'm not yeah, sure about the yellow grow. shirt. No, <laughs> grow up. I could have jacket, <laughs> yellow shirt, massive WWF logo in the background, just to just so you know <laughs> that that's where he works. <laughs> just in case, he works just in WWF. case. Yeah. yeah, don't mistake this for Derby C Derby. This is the WWF. Yeah. Right, uh. make sure you get a massive logo in the background. <laughs> yes, yes, precisely. So yeah, that was really bad, and the music was terrible. Oh. Like, on the bits where you're supposed to be sad, they played like music that was supposed to make you feel sad. <laughs> now, the only thing I could compare it to, and it's nowhere near as good, is during the Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth wedding um, bit from SummerSlam '91, <laughs> where they have that song. Think the instrumental to that song. Yeah, that's what this. That's what was playing here. <laughs> now, if you don't yeah. know the song that I'm talking about, you have to hear it. You go to YouTube and just type in um, "Forever WWE" or "Forever Macho Man" or something like that, and it will bring the yeah. song up. It is a fucking masterpiece. It is one of the. <laughs> <laughs> it's that good that it made it to the WWF or well, like WWE anthology CD collection on the on the uh, the Federation era disc. That's incredible. It's That's awesome. So Is it maybe it's called Together? <laughs> Either way, whichever, forever or together, together. it slaps. Yeah. Together, just you and me forever. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> So good. When you uh, came into my life. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth. Will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome because it's like a shit version of end um, Endless Love. Endless Love, yeah. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! <laughs> I wish Macho Man and Elizabeth had recorded it themselves. Oh, like how amazing would it have been? Oh, it'd have been so good. It would have been so good. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I mean, it's awesome anyway. But it would have been even yeah. better if there was a version with Macho Man and Elizabeth singing it. Yeah. Banger. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that Shawn Michaels video was fucking awful. And I he's coming oh, back was, at the war room. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we didn't know. But... So after this, <laughs> we cut to a break, obviously, in real time. 
and then they come back from breaking. This is going on in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> back back oh from break, God. we've got an impromptu match between the smoking guns and wait for it. <clears throat> I'm going to clear my throat here because I need to not laugh when I say the name of this tag team. <laughs> the Spiders. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for fuck's sake. Do you want to wear something? Do you want to wear something funny that adds a bit more comedy to that? <laughs> yes, please. So earlier on today, I quickly Googled Raw 20 whatever of January. Um, no, 15 or whatever it was. 15th of January, Raw 1996. Just to have a, a quick read before I kind of watched it tonight. And the spiders were called, um, they were called Spider One and Spider Two. <laughs> oh, I'm not joking. <laughs> I mean, come on. The worst of it is, right, they, the ring gear was so fucking awful, right? They, I mean, as you can see here, I, I don't know which one that is, Spider 1 or Spider 2. They're wearing standard wrestling gear. It's got like a design of spider web on the front, uh, like some sort of shit Venom. And they've got like a white Spider-Man-esque mask on. And I think it says arachnid on the side, right? I couldn't quite make it out while I was watching it because it was over so quick. And it literally it came back and it was like, oh, we've come back from break and there's an impromptu match going on. The smoking guns versus the spiders. I mean, <laughs> come on. The spiders. Yeah, it's here. I'm just, I'm just looking back to the website I was I was at earlier. The Smoking Guns defeated the Spiders, bracket Spider 1 and Spider 2. <laughs> and he says here to retain the Tag Team Championship. So the belts are on the line. Right, and they join it mid-match. <clears throat> they, jo <laughs> they join it mid-match. And, 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 wasn't, and, and wasn't it during this match that they cut to um, Doc again? Maybe. Was it in this one? No, I think, it was bit, could, I think it was in the main off. event. It could have been. I think it was in the Undertaker match, yeah. In fact, I'm pretty certain I took a screen grab of it. Yes. Let me see if yeah, I find it. yeah, I definitely took a screen grab of it. It was in the Undertaker match. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the Smoking Guns uh, won. There's Bart Gunn doing a body slam to Spider 1 and or Spider 2. We're not sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, God knows. The Smoking Guns won with their finishing move, and Billy Gunn is very young in this. So that's yeah. good. Young, gun. young Guns. Yeah, yeah, Young Guns. <laughs> Surprised they weren't called that because it was a popular movie out at the time of the same name. Oh, man. Right. For fuck's sake, Rest. this episode of Raw. Bloody, rest. Bloody wrestling. The eh? Spiders. Spider one, get the spider fuck two. Out of here, the spiders. Bring a double pack of action figures out of the spiders because I need that in my collection. Yeah, even I'd buy that. It would just be awesome. Hey, look, there's a shock master figure. Let's just have the spiders as well. The shock master figure is awesome as well because it's upside down in the packaging. Yeah, it? it is awesome. Yeah, That's it funny. is awesome. <laughs> Next up. Oh, my God. I mean, I don't even know where to begin with this. This is one of the most bizarre, no pun intended, uh, in-ring in -ring segments I've ever seen. Now, they've been hyping the Gold Dust interview all night, and this is what was up next. Um, here's Vince looking absolutely fucking livid. When Gold just gets in the <laughs> ring, he looks fuming just to be in his presence. Look at his face. Just look at his face. 
Look at his face. Who oh, approve this? What's this picture I've got here? I reckon I might have like snuck another picture in by accident here. What's this? Oh, that's a. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that's the smoking uh, spider, guns that's, against the spiders again. The spider one or two. If you look down the side of his tights, there it looks like it says a rack. It does say like a rachnid or something like that. Great. Brilliant. Um, so this segment, Vince McMahon is um, playing the part of in-ring interview guy. Yeah. Um, uh, and when it starts, Golda says, "Mr. Television Man, is that a microphone?" you have in your pocket, or are you just pleased to see me? Well, and that was, uh, that was a, a response to, to saying, and I actually oh, yeah, I, I typed yes. it kind of word for word. Oh, you typed it uh, word almost. for word? Good, because I can't uh, remember the words that we used. Not, 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 not word for word, I, I, they're thereabouts. Gold, gold just enters okay. the ring. Vince is there fuming, you know, with the, you know, and all that. And he says, look, Goldust, are you being serious with yeah, this here? They just look at the disgust in his eyes. Um, yeah. He says, Goldust, are you being serious or are you just trying to prey upon the homophobic fears of most men? One of those men being the machismo himself, <laughs> Razor Ramon. <laughs> yeah. Homosexual <coughs> fears. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Hom homophobic fears of most men. And well, then did that's I say, did I say homosexual? Just... Homophobic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Homophobic fears of most men, including Razor Ramon. Uh, and, yeah. and gold and gold oozes just... machismo. Machismo. That's it. That's it. He oozes machismo. Uh, and that's when Gold just says, "It's the broadcast man." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That extra micro. <laughs> microphone in your pants are you just pleased to see me yeah. and you're like wow 1996 at this point you know again we're, we've referenced this in one of the previous episodes the crowd is it's full of kids and it is there's, there's kids there's, it's yeah it's this a, is a the marks are at wcw yeah it's yeah. a family show the, this is a family show the marks are at wcw they they've you know, gone to the bit more of an edgier product, much like today with WWE and AEW. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of AEW, kids at WWE, yeah. a lot of sweaty marks at AEW, and that's fine. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, the the interview goes on, and you know, Goldust is sort of saying all this stuff about Razor Ramon, and he says you'll never forget the name of Goldust, usual stuff. And the King yeah. says, "Oh my God, have you got this down as well?" I have. I had to type this word for word. I, I rewound <laughs> it like four times. This is fucking unbelievable. So Gold just says, "I want Razor Ramon so bad." Okay. Yeah. In a in a very pr provocative way, and the King then say, on comms says, "He may be here, he may be queer, <laughs> but get used to it." <laughs> I mean. And I, right. I, I, I had to, I had to hear, like, go back ten seconds about four times because, well, the first time I laughed, <laughs> second time I laughed, <laughs> and then the third time I was like, hang on, let me just double check. He actually said that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, I, I genuinely could not believe that he said it. <laughs> Look, and I get it. Nineteen ninety six. Totally different time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Jesus Christ, it's a family show. And doesn't doesn't I think uh, at one point as well, he, uh, later on in the show, I'm pretty sure the king calls Vince homophobic as well. Um, yeah, and also something it says something like, um, it says like. He, he he doesn't represent the uh, the gay community or something like that. So weird. <laughs> like such a very weird take. Weird. Very very weird. Yeah yeah yeah. So that was good. That was a, a an incredibly <sighs> bizarre segment. And guess what? 
Guess what? It's back to Doc Hendricks and look. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! Oh my! Back to Doc Hendricks again, and if you want, again, if you're watching the video podcast, you'll see his face. Look at the look of it, <laughs> the look of excitement on Doc Hendricks' face because Razor Ramon is close to the arena. He's close. He's coming. He is close. And then, he is close. In fact, I think oh, he's there. Dear. Yes, here he is. Razor yes, Ramon he arrives. Has arrived at the arena. He's just wearing his jeans and his leather jacket. You know, he's not machismo in it up with the chains and all that fancy stuff. He's coming for a fight. Mm, coming for a dust up. And he's, he's gone to look for gold dust. Should be too difficult to find. He's only just left the ring. But, you know, it's okay. <laughs> oh, man. Now, before so that, we go into this... Oh, go on, sorry. Go on. No, no, no. You carry on. I was going to say, before we, before we go into the... Um, uh, into the main event. We've not covered the uh, billionaire Ted's wrestling war room. Of course. Of course. It was a little bit earlier on in the show this week. Yeah, because there's a, there's more important things to cover, like seeing Doc Hendricks 15 <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they got that one out of the way early, didn't they, this week? Yeah. The wrestling they did. war room. Yeah, so this was basically billionaire Ted wants to know why he can't buy the WWF. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he wants the new generation. Mm. And it was it was a relatively short uh, war room this week. Like they're already running out of ideas. Third episode in, it, I, I I felt like yeah, it, it, this is getting a bit tiresome already. Um, yeah, I just like, like I don't know. How much? I mean, I'm sure they do drag it on for ages, but I'm not sure how of much course. longer that they can actually drag this on for because it's mm. already shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, he says, "What? Well, yeah, why can't I, I've, I've I've bought myself a network, uh, a World Series, a library of classic movies, some of which I've colorized. <laughs> why can't I buy the <laughs> WWF? And then it's we've been trying. Well, why is their wrestling better than ours then?" Well, they've got better athletes. All we've got is these disloyal, greedy husbands from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and the camera moves around to Huckster and uh, the Nacho Man. Uh, yeah, and Scheme Jean's yeah. there as well, and Vince Rousseau's Scheme. there playing his character. Yeah, and then uh, and then he said, Billy Nete says, go out there and buy me some of those WWF generation superstars. Yeah. The, the funny the thing about these... He asked the Huckster to uh, change his name to Boy Toy. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. The, 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 the funny thing about this, uh, these segments, is that WCW actually has the better wrestling at this point. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I thought when I saw that bit. <laughs> like, by a distance as well. It's not even close. Mm -hmm. Like, WCW's wrestling is very, very good. Whereas the WWF stuff, as we you know we've discovered during this episode, can be pretty bad, <laughs> and, and sometimes it can be pretty good depending on how much time matches are given. But you know this yeah, episode especially certainly. they're rushed. Oh, just a bit, just a bit. Yeah. So, uh, oh God, I can't even begin to imagine how many more billionaire Ted skits we've got to suffer through. Yeah, I mean, last week, last week's one was uh, controversial. Uh, it, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like they're going for different controversial things every week. Last week it yeah. was uh, the steroid use. This time it's, you know... Like greedy and disloyal, uh, yeah. Well, no, not so much that, but I mean, like, they go for, like, a different controversial theme on Raw. So, you know, obviously mm. this week with the gold dust stuff and last week with the steroids. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're... Uh, maybe they're, but they're just trying to be a bit more edgy, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So it's main event time. And we get to see another young upstart in mm. the form of this young man, this young dentist, um, Isaac Yankum, DDS. Handsome young fella. Here he is. Look. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Good stuff. Mm. Yep. Good set um, of gnashes. 
good set of gnashes. I mean, you'd think as a dentist mm. he'd sort himself out, but you know, it's okay. Apparently, well, the, he's the king's. Yeah, you, you're going to mm. say yeah. Mm. Yeah, he's the king's dentist. Yeah, who knew? Because, because of course he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's yeah. a good shot here of the king giving some advice to his dentist. Vince looking on, uh, not very happy. No. Yeah, this is no. before. Um, yeah, the match has actually started. Undertaker, of mm. course, at this point is the Phantom of the Opera. There he is. Cool. Yeah. Also, like to point out special shout out here to Sid from Toy Story, who is <laughs> <laughs> right, by, <laughs> right behind Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, and the king does actually reference the children, the kids behind him, and how they've got bad breath a bit later on in commentary. <laughs> <laughs> that bit made me absolutely best. Uh, oh, yeah, dear. so good stuff. So <laughs> Isaac Yankum DDS, you know, young upstart. I don't know what you know the future holds for this guy. Much like young uh, Hardy earlier on in the show, and uh, the ringmaster yeah. as well. A lot of new talent that uh, the WWF are, are, are showing us. Whether they amount to anything, you know, it's yet to be seen. But. You know, we're we're at this uh, at this point of the new generation at the minute. So, I mean, this is I mean, a scene. Look, yeah, I mean, look, I'm <clears throat> I'm no oil pains in myself, but I think what this Yankum fellow would benefit from is maybe a mask of some description. I don't know. I, I you know, I think he's a good looking bloke, and I think if you cover up, I think if you put a mask on him, you waste waste the talent. You know, I think you. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I I, I I don't know. I think you, you 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 know you hide the money, the money the, the money shot, yeah. the face. You, yeah. you know you're gonna ruin it. And I don't really see a future for him in a mask, as a masked character. Mm. Okay. I think that's even why they've yeah. not even bothered to put like a dentist mask on him. You know, like <coughs> a, um, a COVID face mask. Surgical. Yeah, surgical. Yes. Mask. Made famous during uh, COVID times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, this this you know this is a one off match. You know, we talked about this last week. This is you know a yeah. once in a lifetime type match between two two athletes of very similar stature. Um, you know, you'd even you know if you were to look at this picture here, you'd think they were related. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of similarities. Same height, you know, similar builds. Yeah. And yeah. uh, here's Paul Bearer. He looks like a proud father. Mm. Yeah, even yeah. though none of these people are his children, you know, obviously. Of course. Yeah. No, no, no. Of course. Of course yeah. Not much to report from this match, to be honest. Very standard <laughs> big man type stuff. The king got involved, tried to take the chain away from, uh, you know, Paul Bearer. Here's a, here's a nice picture of that. Bit of yep. tug of war going on. Uh, Paul Bearer came out on top, and you can see how smug he is because he's got the chain there. Look. Good times. <laughs> uh, Vin Vince uh, uh, told us at the start of the match that uh, Hart is watching as we speak. Yeah, of course, because he's he nowhere to be seen. We don't. We have no idea. At yep. this point, is he even the WWF champion because he's nowhere yeah, to I, be seen? I mean, I mean, this is our this is our main event for the Royal Rumble. Mm. Well, yeah. the Royal Rumble is the main event. This is the, the WWF title match at the Royal yeah. Rumble. And we have not Arguably seen... the most important match on the card, but okay. Yeah, yeah. We have not seen Bret Hart this year. No, no so far on Raw, Bret Hart, totally absent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is an interesting choice uh, from mm. a booking perspective. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really understand. But anyway, fuck Bret Hart. Let's cut to um, Doc Hendricks, who is in the back here. <laughs> During the fucking match. Oh During God. the main event, Doc Hendricks <laughs> is uh, <laughs> announced that for some reason, Gold Dust is fighting Bret Hart next week on Raw. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. And Razor Ramon is still looking for Gold Dust. But Vince says, well, if Doc Hendricks can find Gold Dust, I'm pretty certain Razor Ramon can. I'm pretty certain he can as well. Yeah, yeah, I would think I would think so. Yeah. Now, <laughs> another bit that <clears throat> happened here is when uh, during this, not this part, 
or oh that Oh, my part. God. But this part. During so, that bit. <laughs> so, Isaac Yankum is going for a tombstone. Now, obviously, this is a move that he's never done before, probably will never do again. No. Um, an Undertaker is, is going to reverse it. As you can sort of see from the picture here, he's struggling out of it, and mm. the idea yep. is to reverse it in, into his own tombstone. So, Correct. But we never see any of this because <laughs> it, the broadcast, for whatever reason, <clears throat> shows Doc Hendricks backstage looking at the floor doing nothing. <laughs> I mean, and for fuck's sake. And, and this and this is pre-recorded. This is a pre-recorded episode of Raw, and they and kept they that think... in. <clears throat> Unbelievable. You know, like, when you're looking at the floor, like, you know, just kid trying to kill time, like maybe you're kicking your feet or something, just looking at the floor. That That is exactly what Doc Hendricks was doing backstage yeah. when it cut yeah. to him. Yeah, def definitely should not have cut to him. And he was really far away as well. Yeah, it was not weird. Like he was even, it's not like he, he was even, like, standing there waiting to do a bit. He was, like, down the corridor. <laughs> yeah, he was just yeah, it was just there. So yeah, weird. It was anyway. Weird. Undertaker hits a tombstone. Ooh. There we go. Yeah. And unsurprisingly, picks up the victory against Isaac Yankum in just a very generic standard big man match. Yeah, and the other thing as well, and I don't I don't I I didn't know whether I'd miss something. But how slow was the count from the ref? Very, very slow. Now there wasn't a ref bump in this match. This, this, but Earl Hebner what, just gets down and like one, one, two, three. I mean, it was for no reason. That, that's what you save for when you're about to win a championship after something yeah. has gone on in the match. Like the referee has gone down. Oh god, bloody hell! And then you know the good guy gets the pin. It's like one, two. And it, you know, then that that warrants a slow count, and it's a big dramatic moment. Yeah. You know, something, some, you know, for a significant event has has gone on, but not just a fucking random match between the Undertaker and Doctor Isaac Yankum DDS on Raw. Because, because, yeah, when when I was I was watching it and saw how slow the count was, I thought, have I have I missed a, a bump here? Have I missed something? But no. Clearly not. <clears throat> no. Just so Undertaker wins. Minutes. He's going to fight uh, Brett the Hitman Hart at uh, the Raw Rumble. We've no idea what Brett Hart's been doing. Just watching Raw, apparently. Chilling. But, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, backstage to Doc Hendricks for the 83rd time of the night. And he's standing with Camel Toe Dust. And uh, <laughs> that's right. Bull Dick Bull Dust is back. Yeah. Yeah. So. In in my notes, I put Doc is then going to interview Goldust. Goldust is rubbing himself. Bulge on show. Yeah, bulge on show. <laughs> yeah, bulge on show. And then <laughs> <laughs> all hell breaks loose. <laughs> and Razor comes out of nowhere and absolutely beats the living shit out of Goldust <laughs> with blue tubs of nothing. And yeah. there's People all over the place. I think Chimmel's there. <laughs> yeah, um, Chimmel's there. Hebner's back there again, I think, as well. And his brother. Slow counting. Slow counting, yeah. Um, he, he slow counted, then rushed backstage to watch <laughs> uh, the blue tubs of nothing get smacked over Goldust's head. Goldust also gets thrown into a table. And then it cuts away from this action for a minute to cut to this. Now, think back to when you're a baby. And you have your first bath, right? And maybe your parents want to capture this moment. Um, that's what this that's what this reminds me of. <laughs> oh, my first dear. bath. My first bath. My first bath. So yeah, there, here's Sonny in the bath looking just I mean the cameraman must have just been in heaven. Um, today, mm. um, Jonathan, the cameraman, your um, 
you're you're tasked with filming some vignettes for Sunny. So, uh, oh, okay, great. Yeah, what are we going to be doing? Well, one of them she's going to be uh, she's going to be playing pool. Okay, great, cool. Uh, what else have we got? So, the other the other segment we've got planned is um, going to be back at the ho- the the WWF. You know where where we're staying, and you're going to be filming uh, Sunny naked in the bath. Pun. Pun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're gonna be filming mm-hmm. Sunny naked in the in the in the bath, but she's not gonna have any clothes on. No, no, no. She's gonna be completely yeah. naked and telling telling the audience how she likes it raw. Now, mm. um, obviously, we need you to remain professional. Uh, oh yeah, of course, yeah, no, 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 no problem at all. I can absolutely uh, uh, re- remain professional, yeah. beating one off behind the camera. Yeah, Jonathan was then fired for uh, wanking on yeah. set. Yeah, yeah. We never saw John- Jonathan. Was never seen again. But yeah, he had the time. He had the time of his life. Um, <laughs> filming Sunny do these dirty vignettes uh, all week. It's a story to tell his mates down the pub forever. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can go. Hey, look, have you seen the um, January fifteenth episode of Raw from nineteen ninety six? Them, uh, them vignettes that Sunny was doing when she was telling everyone that she liked it raw. Yeah. Well, uh, I filmed them. Oh wow! You used to work for the WWF. What happened? What uh, what 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 made you leave? Um, uh, um, yeah, best looks cool. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I, um, <coughs> I, uh, I was I was filming the sunny vignettes with my trousers down. Sorry, what? what, what, what are you? <laughs> Don't worry about it. No, I just left. I went to WCW. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm disloyal. Disloyal. I went to WCW. Yeah, and um, yeah, it was it was good good times. Anyway. The Raw Rumble is coming up, <laughs> and uh, again, it's, it's just such a crazy show. They come, they go from Sunny in the Bath to showing us the matches for the Raw Rumble. So, um, yeah. oh, but before that, next Monday, Bret Hart with the WWF Championship there is um, taking on Goldust. Cool. Um, Undertaker. Here we go. There's the Raw Rumble matches. So Bret Hart, same picture, but the other way around. Yep. Look, here we go. Look. Oh, facing that way, yeah. but now. Facing this way, flippity flip, he flippity flipped. Uh, then we've got, of course, the uh, the smoking guns We're taking on the body donners with uh, with Sunny, who's been featured a lot on this uh, episode of Raw. Good times. Um, she's covering up from Jonathan there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Of course, we've got the main event: Razor Ramon versus Gold Dust. Main event, uh, yeah. yeah, but it's you know the most important match on the card for sure. And so uh, we've got Ahmed Johnson against Jeff Jarrett, which I forgot all about because it wasn't mentioned on this entire episode of Raw until this part. So that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then of course we've got the the Raw Rumble match itself. There's the logo. And then once again, it cuts the fucking backstage for Christ's sake. <laughs> Why we didn't get the point in the first place. <laughs> And we get a replay. Don't we? we get yeah, a replay. A replay. Yeah, we get a, a replay. There's Razor Ramon hitting Goldust with a blue tub of nothing. Then he lobs one across the, the fucking corridor. And then it spills out into backstage and it's snowing for Christ's sake. And everyone's just rolling around outside. Yeah. Like there's an official there. I think it's Earl Hedner's brother. You can't see a lot in this picture. It's a really bad screen grab that I've got there. But Goldust is. Underneath Razor at this point, Razor's getting some shots in. At one point, he picks up a snow shovel and tries to tries to twat him with it, misses. Yeah, it's absolutely it's madness. And there's like a like a, a an abandoned train cart or something there <laughs> that like Razor gets thrown into. Goldust then runs off. Razor picks something up and lobs it through his car window. Yeah, I think it was another blue tub of nothing. <laughs> I think you know, there's just blue tubs of nothing just around there. In the earlier dust up that they had when when uh, Razor Ramon first turns up, did you notice some free fall into that box and then couldn't stand back up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you <laughs> like what? Now, you know, like when you can't get out of a chair, you're like oh, oh shit, in it. I can't get out of here. Yeah. It was like that. <laughs> <laughs> also. <laughs> Did you, you know, there's a, there a bit where when it cut back to them, now Razor threw gold dust into like what I can only 
think is like electrical boxes on a wall. And I'm pretty certain yeah. the dog Hendrix says shit. <laughs> Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. He did. It just, it just. But again, I can't even. I can't believe that. Okay, like this was pre-recorded, so they didn't take it out in the original, and then they've not taken it out since it being on the network either. No. So we've. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't know. Jesus notice that. Christ. Oh it shit! Was, uh, <laughs> shit! <laughs> God almighty! I mean, it was it was a mental episode of Raw. <clears throat> oh, it was all over the gaff. It was just an absolute clusterfuck. It was, <sighs> and this was the go home show to the Raw Rumble. Uh, it's uh, again. You can't, I mean, you can't you can't really compare the two, but there's no. Uh, nowadays, you'd, even if there's not any sort of match, you know, you think about current day Undertaker. He, he wouldn't have any sort of many matches, would he, in the build up to Mania because of no. his age and stuff. But he's doing promos or he's doing something. You don't even get Bret Hart coming out and saying, "Like, <laughs> you're, you're not going to win this week, this Sunday at the Royal Rumble." And all. you don't get any of that. No. There's just no build. Maybe it's <clears throat> Bret Hart versus Marty Jannetty at the beginning and not <clears throat> Owen Hart. Yeah. You know, just, just to show him, just to, just so he's there. And then you can talk yeah. about his match with The Undertaker and hype it up a little bit. But there yeah. was none of that. We uh, had no Bret Hart at all. Did, have we even had a promo in the last like three episodes? I, I, I have what? a feeling that we have. I don't know. I can't remember, but he's just, oh, I don't know. It didn't need us to cut back to bloody Doc Henry about six times during the show. Didn't need <laughs> it at all. No, no, no. He definitely did not need that. Um, but <sighs> look, this is what we agreed to subject ourselves to. <laughs> and this is what we are subjecting ourselves to. And next up for us, it's going to be the Royal Rumble 1996. And honestly, I can't wait. I might watch it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't wait. I really, <laughs> really can't wait. I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. I mean, right. I mean, it can't be as bad as these three episodes of Raw that we've, <laughs> that we've watched in the build-up to the Royal Rumble. No. No. Yeah, um, no. We've had, weirdly enough, we've had more build for Ahmed Johnson and Jeff Jarrett than we have for The Undertaker versus Bret Hart for the championship. Yeah. Yeah. And a stupid amount of build for Razor Ramon versus Goldust. Yeah. A lot of build for that. <clears throat> so, yeah, Royal Rumble 96 is the next stop for us. And that's what we're going to be covering on the next episode of The Other Channel. <laughs> We are now properly in line with Nitro in terms yes. of episodes. So I think next we will actually do an episode of Nitro just for a bit of a break from this chaos. Yeah. And then the, 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 the show after that, we cover the 96 Raw Rumble. Yeah, that sounds good. That does yeah. sound good. I think that's that's probably the best way to go. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Right, so um, this has been episode three of the other channel, the Games and Graps podcast brought to you by Powered 4 TV. Go follow us on all social medias. That's at Games and Graps, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Head over to our YouTube if you're not watching it on YouTube already, youtube.com forward slash Games Graps. We do streams and stuff too, twitch.tv forward slash Games and Graps. And our podcast is available on all podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. And of course, powered4.tv. My name is Sunny G, and I've been here with Steve. See you later. And we'll see you for Nitrous Radio next week. Take it easy, guys. Goodbye. See you later. <laughs>